Welcome in. It's the Positively Petland Show, 800 KXIC, KXIC.com. Some frozen pups out there. I'm cold lately. I know. What happened I, to the like, weather here? I don't know. I guess like it's, it's not that far down, but all of a sudden it's like bone chilling. Yeah. I've, I just felt that this morning as I was getting out. I was like, man, and then the wind doesn't help either. But uh, some some people struggling out there waiting for their dogs to do their business, uh, waiting every morning. You know, that's one of the things I remember about my dog. Uh, we're going to talk about ways that you can help your dog, uh, help you help your dog and you have a better relationship overall. We always do that. We have a, a breed of the week we'll talk about. We'll have the amazing pet story of the week as well. And uh, in general, how are things going, Ron? of love and life we're getting the valentine's decorations going so you're going to see a lot of love in the store here a lot of love don't forget your furried friend for valentine's day right we got plenty of uh, ways to give your dog cat gerbil hamster fish reptile some love <laughs> some love i love it all right so we'll get into the positive we've had what's our breed of the week this week pembroke oh pembroke. welsh corgi okay do you have one at the, at yeah, the store yeah yep I, uh, on the taping or here we're airing on Sunday, I should still have a couple of Pembroke Welsh Corgis that you can check out, see the personalities, learn a little bit about, wait, why did you say Pembroke Welsh? You know, is there others? Yes, there are. Um, but I would say that the Pembroke is the most common and that's the one that you probably are visualizing right now. Okay, good deal. And, uh, also we're going to not only have that, but we're going to, uh, give you the topic. What's our topic going to be for the show here today? We're, it's uh, February, so it's dental care month for your pets. And so we're going to learn a little bit about why is that important for your pet? Um, and then, well, what can I do to help my pet out with that? Okay, good deal. And then we'll have a food to talk about too. We're going to talk about is your, is your dog doing one of two things? It's not gaining enough weight or no, I got the opposite of that. My dog is getting really overweight. We're going to take both of those situations and say, here is some ways you can address that issue really easily. And neither one of these will cost you any more money. And you might be surprised to know it doesn't involve buying a weight management food, right? Correct. Uh, what they're going to talk about. The that. tease. Yes. Very good. All right. Well, we need the amazing pet story of the week. Big voice guy. Come on in. It's time for the amazing pet story of oh, the week. He just handed me something. <laughs> it's a valentine. It says, be mine. What? <laughs> be mine what? <laughs> well, hey, I can't read what he's just put underneath that. He, he called me something that I, that is not uh, one of the words I can say on the radio. So thanks a lot, big voice guy. Big I, think voice you're, guy. I think you're doing something nice, and then you, you do that. Right. But isn't he got something planned for us? Next week. Up? Is it next week? I think he's Cupid next week. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Opie shaves. All right, onward we go to the amazing pet story of the week. This one's cool. Uh, a lot of times you hear about man, your dog being man's best friend, and a lot of the stories I've told over the years have been about a dog saving a person. This is a dog saving another dog, and there's video footage to catch this actual incident that took place at Rumble.com, the site that has the video, and they were at the Yupsi River, and what happened was there were two dogs that were playing, uh, they were playing fetch with the uh, with some sticks, and unfortunately, it started getting a little too, uh, the the uh, current got to be too strong, and there's video footage of one uh, yellow lab pulling a black lab out of the water by the stick. So the the, wow. the the black lab is out of, is having trouble getting out of the water. Who knows if he would have actually went under, but the the uh, the yellow lab pulled him out with a stick and helped save his own life. So, and there's video of that. So Golly, kind of wonder really cool. If they huh? knew what th was going on. Was it just playing? Or? Yeah. And, it, and you know, you, you wonder it was a rough, it was a rough current. So again, it's no not pun intended. It's, it's, yeah. It's not for sure that he would have went under, but you know, it was a kind of a dicey situation. And it was, and the dog steps in and helps out by pulling him back up onto the rock with, uh, with a stick. So very cool. That's the amazing pet story of the week from the Yuspi river. There's a question. I'm going to turn it on you. Where's the Yuspi river at? Tell me in the out, right outside the town of Yuspi, <laughs> <laughs> Yuspi, Colorado, uh, Col Wyoming. That's your guess. Wyoming, Wyoming. Yes. All right. And I love the internet because we'll find out very quickly where the Yuspi. Oh, I thought you knew. Right. No, off, I, like... no I'm looking it up here. It. Um, let's see, the Yuspi 
River. Uh, oh, you know what's interesting is every time I type it in, it's coming up uh, that story. So obviously, it's got a lot of uh, play. Well, it's probably it's in little... Argentina. Whoa. So, yeah, South America. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking through Argentina. that. That's pretty neat. Yeah, really cool though. A good story there. Dog helping to save another dog, playing with sticks. They're playing with their dogs. Got a little out of control, and one of them helped save the other one. So that's yeah. your amazing pet story of the week. It's time to take a break. When we come back, we're going to hear about the Welsh corgi, right? No, Pembroke corgi. Pembroke. Right, Pembroke Welsh. <laughs> I'll, get it, I'll get it straight. The Welsh Pembroke or Pembroke Welsh? The Pembroke Welsh corgi. Got it. I think. <laughs> we'll talk about that and more when we get back. It's the Positively Petland Show at KXIC.com. Are we up on uh, YouTube, too? We are up. Hi. Live. Say hi. Yeah, if you ever want to watch that, just type in. I always use Positively Petland Radio Show yeah. as the tag. I've and always, then I have when I've tried to find it, I've just typed in Petland Radio and it pops up. So, Pet, yeah, yeah, Petland Radio. Pretty yep. easy to remember. All on right. YouTube, right on the YouTube search field, and you'll it will pop up. You'll see the previous shows if you want to. Yeah, there. watch them all. Hey, if you want to see what a uh, uh, big voice guy looks like, there you, you go. gotta check it out. You'll never know unless you watch the videos online. We'll be right back with more after this. It's the Positively Petland Show on KXIC. <laughs> <laughs> big voice guy that bit has been going for years it's pretty funny mm -hmm. <laughs> people just probably shake their head oh they're goofing again <laughs> two four what's saturday it's five five all right uh promo okay mm-hmm in three, two, one. 800 KXIC, morning host Jay Capron here with Ron Salzer from Petland of Iowa City. What are we going to talk about this week, Ron? The Pembroke Welsh Corrigi. <laughs> There's my accent. And then we're going to talk about dental care for your pets. Did you know that your pet right now has some dental issues that you need to take care of to help them out? And then we're going to talk about weight gain and weight loss for your dog what should you be doing to help your dog if either one of those are occurring okay it's the positively petland show sunday mornings at nine and on demand at kxic.com via podcast perfect I think you're getting a good feel for what 30 seconds is nowadays. Too. Yeah, I actually was going to go further, and mm -hmm. I went, nope. Yeah, that was 31. So, all right. And here we go. Back in three, two, one. <laughs> Welcome back. It's the Positively Petland Show, 800 KXIC, KXIC.com. I'm Jay Caperin with Ron Solzard from Pet Petland of Iowa City. And it's time to feature our breed of the week. Every week we feature a different breed. And I know last time, uh, well, we used to do the show live and we took calls. I remember corgi owners were very uh, vocal. And I remember they loved their corgis. And I'm guessing that's just one of those things. There are certain breeds that the, the owners are just passionate about. And I think corgis are one of those. Yeah, I wonder if there is a personality style. Because, you know, you can talk about dachshunds all day long. But... I think dachshund owners are kind of like mellow. Mm -hmm. You know, they just like that mellow dog and everything like that. And but Pembroke, hey, that brings out that personality. And maybe those people are a little more vocal. Mm -hmm. Hey, I want to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, they say that people are like their dogs sometimes, or there's an opposite type thing going on. I've always thought the corgis look like they should have longer legs than they have. We're gonna learn about that. All right. What is going on there? Uh, and I always think when I look at a Pembroke or a, a corgi in general they look like they're smiling all the time yeah they do and so i think that is an attractant to a lot of people i think if for most people that would be something sure tell well tell us about it then all right so the pembroke welsh corgi and that's my bad accent <laughs> so the history of them historians theorize that pembroke origins may include spitz type dogs of the vikings and earlier scandinavian seafarers combined with the indigenous small herding dogs of the tackle type uh <laughs> believed to have arrived in i don't even understand that last part uh what prognators of the cardigan oh, gosh that gets really detailed there all right we're gonna back out a little bit uh 
in Wales, uh, direct ancestors of the Pembrokeshire uh, breed are known to have uh, accompanied the Flemish weavers who settled in the southwestern Wales in about 1107 AD. Hmm. Uh, so this goes way back. The weavers' dogs were of the Spitz family, like the Shipperkey, and helped around the farms. Gradually, the two types of short herding dogs uh, intermingled those <laughs> little things. Uh, the older remained predominantly in rugged uh, Cardiganshire. I, I hope I think I did that, that one all right. Uh, to the north, while the Spitz version, with the addition of genes from the few other breeds, developed into the Corgi uh, from Pembrokeshire. Hmm. So that's a little bit of the history, and I apologize for my not saying things well on that one. Um, but you got to got a gist. Old, uh, a lot of different things, Wales, Celtic, you know, we, we kind of figured all that. So form and function. So let's learn a little bit about those little short legs. With their normal-sized body and short, sturdy legs, the Cordy is, cl is classed as an... I'm just going to, it's a long word and I can't pronounce it. A dwarf. Okay. There's, there's the other word for it. A dwarf breed. So there are dwarf breeds out there. Can you guess what other dwarf breeds are, are out there? Um, Think about this because all of a sudden uh, I remember talking with Dr. Ebert from Gentle Heart Pet Clinic about it and going, I had no idea that there was this whole class. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, uh, Dachshund. Th is that a dwarf breed? It's a dwarf. What's another one? With short legs. Yeah, anything with short legs. Bulldog? Bulldog, uh, English bulldog. English bulldog. Yeah. So there's these all these dwarfs out there that you went, oh, I get it. They bred them intentionally for that because then that um, helped them with some hunting aspects or herding aspects or they can get under the brush aspects. Uh, with English bulldogs, I've I've never heard any purpose whatsoever for being dwarf. They're just what everybody wants, kind of a thing. Yeah, that was yeah. that was a what a noble, a, uh, more of a the the kings and queens had those things. Yeah, you know, those yeah, English bulldogs. So when the small Welsh cattle were grazed in, so getting I think they're going to go uh, back into the dwarfism aspect. So when the small Welsh cattle were grazed in common unfest fenced pastures, the nimble corgi herded them to the choicest spots and chased away competition. Hmm. Their double coat repelled dirt and self-cleaned enough for duties uh, at the hearth. Uh, the dogs were built low enough to dodge kicks mm. as they uh, nipped at the cow's flying heels. So there it is. You know, So they were probably noticing way back then that the taller, the taller dogs, dogs were the kicked. spits were getting hit and they were not doing well. Hey, how can we do this? And then, you know, it's one of those ingenious, like, yeah. whoa. People are smart. Oh, hey, look it. They're not getting, you know, they avoid it. Isn't that just neat? Uh, they perk ears, channeled sounds of vermin uh, they sought to dispatch. I love some, the way they, if we said this all in one uh, verbiage, that would be good. Um, it, it would paint the picture better than I do. With legs extending, their fluid gait eased long trips. Huh. That had to be a combination of short legs, which doesn't do that, but the long body mm -hmm. then allows them to have good long strides as they drove flocks of geese to market. While most Pembroke Corgi tails are docked, there always has been a strong gene for the natural bob. Hmm. So they must not have to bob them all that much. And then living with a corgi, a good breeder will know which puppies' temperament and physical traits will best suit your plans. Some corgis, for example, are born with fluffy, long-haired coats. So there is some, and I've, we've seen that over the year where we're like, oh, I didn't realize that the corgi can have that kind of a coat. Although adorable pets, these fluffies are not eligible for the confirmation ring. Interesting. Hmm. Um, so they make great pets. But the way the Pembroke Welsh Corgi Club within AKC, th somebody probably had a little like, no, that long coat, that's not part of it. Mm -hmm. And so they excluded that. Now, is that wrong? Uh, you know, it's if you're not showing your dog, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I always find these interesting because, yeah. you know, you we might th say, oh, that is so cute. But it's only because the club originally defined it. It's as ironic not a too because trait. they're always uh, talking about how they want to keep it, you know, um, 
rooted and, and as original as possible, but they're all, almost all the breeds are mixes anyway, right? Uh, originally, yeah, yeah. We, we learned in the history of the Pembroke of what mixes made yeah. them up, and that happened so long ago, they're a little, they're guessing at some of those, yeah. but I, I find it, you know, it's kind of like what we as people struggle with. The longer, you know, fluffy, long-haired is part of that breed, but the club excluded yeah. it. Isn't that like it our is. society yeah, at, yeah. in general? Oh, okay. you turn off. up your nose to the fluffiness. Okay. Off of off of that uh, that uh, stump there, we'll get back on to talking about dogs. Uh, if you hope to show your dog uh, in confirmation, study the standard for the guidance. Growing corgis can uh, go through many uneven stages. I think this is interesting because when you get your corgi, you're going to go, wait, is it really a corgi? Wait, oh yeah, it is. Oh. Wait, now, you know, six months later, it doesn't look like hmm. this because it grows in uneven stages. This is for all dogs, and I like that they're bringing it out. Um, you can have a dog with a, a, a slight underbite or overbite uh, while they're growing up, and that's just natural. And it's how their jaw grows in relation to their skull. Hmm. And sometimes one grows a little longer, quicker. Um, all dogs grow with a very a uh, short abrupt snoot it's not extended out so th as they're growing up that then develops and it elongates out eventually bre uh, heads broaden muzzles lengthen uh, top lines rise or fall the chest deepens that means it gets bellowed out and more most pembrokes will not look their adult best until about two years of age most corgis are not hyperactive and happily settled down when asked so that's a almost just like a dachshund in that way because they kind of dachshunds can be a little playful but hey we want to lay down you know mm -hmm. or i want to watch some tv or read a book they'll come right with you uh, but they thrive on exercise both mental and physical they become closely attuned to their owners and do not take to being ignored and that's the one thing i've also just from corgi owners is yeah they are really good with our family but this is one of those breeds. If you do not uh, socialize them with strangers and a bigger crowd, they tend to really like be protective of your family. So, well, gosh, my corgi is so beautiful and loving with my family. I, I had no idea it would bite another dog or bite somebody. And this is where in canine ab across the board, you're going to find all dogs will get really close to who you uh, share them with. Um, but beyond that, if you're not constantly introducing them to strangers and showing strangers are okay, they tend to then start protecting you more. And that's just a natural tendency of dogs. Do we understand everything about it? No, but we've got some social styles that we uh, look at on dogs and that's where that whole pack animal and alpha and all that mm. kind of stuff comes from the more you socialize your dog with other people in general the nicer they are are some breeds more intensive in that yes the corgi is mildly in that direction not like a pit bull we all hear about pit bulls and rottweilers and all that kind of stuff those are more intensive pack animals and so you have to really socialize those breeds in order for them to be nice with everybody Interesting. That's the Corgi, and we're <laughs> just about out of time for that segment. Um, anything else on the Corgi? That is life with a Corgi. All is right. that the right breed for you? That's something for you to decide. And you be. can come into Petland, learn more about them, hold them. You know, is this the right breed? I for like you? the idea of that it calms down for the most part when you know when you need it to. There's certain times that dogs become so hyperactive that it can become annoying because you're trying to get them to calm down. And they just What's won't. the number one way to get a dog to calm down? Exercise. Exercise. Yeah. So, so if your dog is that irritating dog that's just, in my own little uh, fluffy Susie, a, a Maltese poodle, when she is just on us and just, Susie, leave us alone for a little bit here, we go exercise her, I mean, five minutes, and she's like, <gasps> You know, like all done and okay, now I'm with you. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry about that. You know? <laughs> a little spazzy for yeah, a while. Yeah. <laughs> Good deal. All right. So onward we go to the next topic, which is dental health, right? Right. We're going to talk about, and this is, a, I'm going to, oh gosh, I think it steers it more towards the dog, but this is exactly the same for cats. Um, and that, did you know that your dog and cat most likely is showing evidence of periodontal disease right now? And you're like, whoa. 
you know, how can that be? I, I don't see it and all that. And so I wanted to just read a couple of uh, paragraphs on periodontal disease from the American Veterinary, Veterinary Dental College. And I think it goes through and it explains it well. And then we'll go into a little bit of how do I stop this from happening and everything. So periodontal disease is the most common clinical condition occurring in adult dogs and cats as it, and is entirely preventable. So we can prevent this and or bring uh, restore it back to its original if we catch it soon enough. By three years of age, most dogs and cats have some evidence of periodontal disease. Unfortunately, other than bad breath, there are few signs of the disease process evident in uh, to the owner. So bad breath, if you see, you know, notice your dog, and most dogs have, and did you know, have, does had any of your cats or do any of your cats have bad breath? Uh, they, can't, they can have, especially if they just ate. I've never noticed any yeah. breath on a cat ever, yeah. but my wife, Wendy, has... Uh, noticed it on our cat from time to time. I'm like, gosh, I just don't know it. I do know Callie, our dachshund. Oh my goodness. I didn't know what happened in her bed. I thought she <laughs> pooped or something. <laughs> and I got closer and I'm like, there is nothing in there. And I kind of smelled around on the bed and it smelled good. And then I put her back in and I go, oh my gosh, it smells like it again. It was a breath. <laughs> it smelled like poop. Uh, so, so that is a key sign to us. So if you see or smell that, you're already into, uh, into periodontal diseases and, and into different stages of it. So we need to take it, uh, it. That's a good thing to take care of right away because you're progressing. Uh, uh, they probably need some, if it's extreme, professional dental cleaning from the uh, from your veterinarian. Um, and then uh, periodontal therapy often comes to, uh, too late to prevent extensive disease or to save teeth. So if you, if your dentist is saying we need to pull some teeth, uh, he's probably he or she is probably talking. Hey, you got periodontal disease here, and some, and we got to do it pretty aggressively. As a result, periodontal disease is usually undertreated and may cause multiple problems in the oral cavity and may be associated with damage to internal organs in some patients as they age. So just like us, we have that same exact issue. If we do not take care of our teeth, what do we do? We lose them. Extreme cases, we lose all of them. It, even further, uh, heart disease has been uh, linked to dental issues uh, as well as some liver issues and some other organs in our body. And I'm sure we're just starting to figure all of that out. So take care of those teeth. Let's, a little bit more on them. Periodontal disease begins when bacteria in the mouth form a substance called plaque. Oh, well, we know what that is. That sticks to the surface of the teeth. Okay, we can we can figure that out. Subsequently, minerals in the saliva harden the plaque into dental calculus, also known as tartar, which is firmly attached to the teeth. Okay, this is all sounding really familiar to all of us. Tartar above the gum line is obvious to many owners, but it is not of itself the cause of the disease. The real problem develops is plaque and calculus. What am I? Calculus. Why am I thinking math? Just call it tartar. Tartar. Uh, and tartar spread under the gum line. Bacteria in the subgingival plaque set in motion a cycle of damage to the supporting tissues around the teeth. Uh, that is exactly the same thing ours my uh, dentist has talked with me about you know proper hygiene and all that and i i don't have dental issues and i but i am always curious of why you know and he goes well you know how you're flossing and all that kind of stuff you're getting below the gum line with that floss and that's what's good and so it's below the gum line where issues start occurring so if you see plaque it's chances are it's already under the gum line and you need to address all of that and that's where the uh your a veterinarian can get in there and remove that and then let's work on ways to prevent it. So eventually uh, all of this eventually leading to the loss of the tooth. Bacteria under the gum line secretes toxins which contribute to the tissue damage uh, if untreated. It goes on into some more really good detail but it just gets deeper and deeper into this that we need to take care of this. So what do we all know is the number one way to help your dog and cat with dental hygiene? Hard kibble. First, Hard right? kibble. In fact, I always like to point out it, it did go away. Uh, the bigger the kibble, the better it is for your 
uh, cat or dog in dental hygiene. And um, it was probably seven years ago, there was a dog food that came out and it was one massive kibble. They made it in the shape of a bone just to make it so that we figured it out. Mm. We started to get people to understand this is the best thing for your dog. And you just pick the size of bone within the bag that was an appropriate meal size. So they had probably about five different sizes so mm. that you can get the right size bone for your uh, dog as far as nutritional goes. And then they had to crunch away at this thing all the way through. And I went, that's genius. It's going to go, you know, it's going to be it. Well, we didn't figure it out as a society and we like kibble. Um, and what's interesting is, is the trend with our customers, I think in general though, across the board is, is you tend to go to smaller kibbles. I always hear people go, uh, my dog only will eat kibble if it's small. Why do you think that is? Because that's what you're giving. It, yeah. It's easier. Yeah. It, I don't have to work as hard. I just gulp it. Mm -hmm. I just take it in, swallow it. It's easier. So they're uh, not getting that teeth. Uh, so they're not working. having to work. And that work is what's helping them with their dental issues. So how do I hit, take a dog from small kibble to bigger kibble? That's all they get is the is the strategy, just like we, we would with Jack, mm -hmm. our kids, uh, in that you don't want to eat it. All right. Well, you're going to go go to bed hungry or you're going to go to school hungry. And I know as parents, we go, wait, you can't do that. They learn really quickly because that drive to eat is so strong. They're going to go, whatever, I'm going to eat it, you know, kind of a thing. They might miss that first meal. Uh, we had a cat that we had no choice. Gilbert had to eat this kibble because it was medicated. And if we if he didn't eat that kibble, we would be at the veterinarian in two weeks paying $800 just to keep our cat alive. Okay, we had a big incentive. And so I saw how Gilbert, he didn't, you know, we were spoiling him, you know, we were giving him all sorts of stuff, but he needed this medication now and it was in the kibble to help him out with his problem. And it took him three days. Now, I will say Gilbert was overweight at that time. Mm -hmm. So he did have a healthy weight on him and he could stand. It's got to be tough on that third day though. You're just thinking, oh, oh yeah. I mean, I, we were calling the, the veterinarian mm -hmm. and saying, he's still not eating. What do we do? And he goes, hold out. Don't do anything. And unless you want to come back in two weeks and pay me a lot of money, you know, kind of a thing. And so that's when at three days is when Gilbert. And so he, that's a more of an extreme situation. Three days, yeah, after three days, I, I am going to talk with the veterinarian. The veterinarian is going to do a little bit more to help us through it. Um, but most dogs, most cats, within a half a day, they're going, I want food, just give me anything. And they're going to start eating whatever you're giving them. So hold out a little bit. Uh, with As parents, we know we have to set boundaries on our pets or on our kids. Um, we need to do the same exact thing on our pets because they will respond uh I think even more so than our kids. Our kids, you know, higher intellect and all that kind of stuff can, yeah, gosh, really, they can work us over so really easily. Can. Yep. Um, dogs and cats, you're going to find, will respond uh, much easier to setting boundaries. In this case, this is what you have to eat. You don't have any choice kind of a thing. Isn't it interesting how kids can work uh, each parent differently too? Oh my goodness. Well, dogs do that too. Right. I know dogs, yeah. cats. I, our ki my cat Gilbert treats me differently yeah. than uh, Wendy. Smart little buggers. Yeah. Like she, in I won't, she, he'll bite Wendy to get her his way. He will not bite me. Gilbert? Yeah. That's, he, I can't, I don't even know, but every week I hear a, ow, <laughs> I go, did he bite you? Yeah, I was petting him and then I stopped and then all of a sudden he bit me. That's he wanted funny. more petting. That's, you know what, uh, quick side story is Zoe, when she loves being pet and there's times where I'll be petting her and then I'll get, I'll be on my phone texting or something like that. So there's been times where she'll bite my phone and try and pull it away from me there because it is. she wants me to use my hand to not text to pet. <laughs> So she'll grab it with her teeth. She pulls it and she's trying to pull that. it out of my hand. I'm like, hey, I'm trying to make it send a message here. And she's like, no, pet me. Come on. Pet right. Me. So <laughs> setting some boundaries for you. Yeah. Hey, put, hey, that phone put the down. phone down. All right. So we're almost out of time for this topic. Uh, other ways people can help. Uh, so kibble is the number right? one way. We've got a whole month to talk about this. So we're going to talk everything from how do you brush your dog's teeth? Do I really need to do that? We're going to go through that. We're going to. doesn't sound like fun. No. But. There's ways, we're gonna talk about those ways, and then we're gonna keep on going, well, wait, my dog or cat has nasty breath. 
Um, and it's a continual thing. We went to the veterinary, we had it clean. You know what? A month later, it was all back again. How can we help you with that? Okay, we learned about bigger the kibble, the better. So you can start working your dog, cat in that direction. And then we're going to give you some more ideas that will definitely work. Uh, I use them on Susie, our trouble child. That little Maltese poodle is a plaque producer. And she can have some really nasty breath. So we know that periodontal disease is occurring in there. And we keep her clean. She, she gets clean teeth cleanings on the order of about every five years. If we didn't do this preventative work that we're doing, it would probably be about every eight months. And I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but haven't we talked about greenies in the past as being? That's going to be one of ours. Like a yeah, treat. There's, a, there's some really cool products out there that really work if you use them. Okay, good deal. So we'll talk about that as they'll be kind of our theme for the month here for the month of February. So listen in for that. But as we get ready to sign off, of course, we always talk about a certain food. So okay. tell us about our food. And I wanted to talk about just a topic and then bring the food in on it. Um, yesterday I had a question uh, right as I was walking out the door of a customer looking for has, I believe it was a Weimariner, uh, still in the puppy phase, eight months of age. I can't keep weight on. What do I do? Um, she was feeding a grocery brand. And so we were quickly coaching her that, well, that doesn't have much calorie in it, does not have much protein or fats in it. And that is what your dog is just starving for right now. And so I showed her a product by American Natural Premium. It's their Endurance Plus program. This is formulated uh, not only for uh, the hunting dog, you know, those really active dogs that are having problems keeping on weight, they're not getting enough calories, proteins, and fats, um, but it also is formulated for the puppies, suitable for puppies and pregnant or nursing mothers. Um, so this is good at those developing bodies and all that. I've researched this product and the protein levels are wonderful. So if you're having a problem with your dog, might be elderly, and you know how we even sometimes start losing weight to uh, my grandfather had this where he was like a little skeleton, a tall skeleton. Mm. Um, and he had problems keeping weight on. So you can use it for puppies. You can use it for those very high energy dogs that have problems uh, keeping weight on and those elderly dogs that are losing weight. I know of one on a farm right now. That, oh, he is an awesome dog, but he is skin and bones and they food, 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 but he's not keeping the weight on, give him a higher protein, fats, and calorie product, and he'll get it back on again. So premium, American Natural Premium is the brand. Uh, we have it in our store. It's a black bag. Uh, look for Endurance Plus. That's going to do that. Now let's talk about the other one real briefly. My dog has too much weight, or my cat is too uh, fat, and need, I need to do it, uh, bring everything down. This is where, let's set some boundaries on those two, and we're going to help them with it. If you give them all the food they want, they're going to eat, 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 and they're going to continue that size. All we got to do is cut back on our food, and, and that way you're going to slowly, and we're talking very small increments, not, you know, you put a line around your cup, this is how much I'm giving them, all right, we need to decrease the weight some more, put the line one millimeter, two millimeters lower. I'm not talking a lot. So your dog or cat is not going to look at you and go, I'm still hungry. You won't even notice the difference. But over three to nine months, depending on the severity of the overweight, just keep on lowering that line so that everybody feeds them the same and you get that weight loss. And now you have a healthier cat and dog as a result. That's how you uh, lose weight. You can do the weight management, but realize all they're doing is taking calories, proteins, and fats out of there. So you're paying the same amount of money that you were before for less. Why not buy the nice food, get all those in there, and just feed a little bit less uh, over time and get that weight into track yeah it makes sense it's uh it makes sense all right well that's the positively petland show we are out of time and we'll talk more about dental hygiene some things you could do for your dogs cats that's up next month or next week and we'll continue to have some fun as we always do with the positively petland show five dollar nail trims buy 10 get one free food at petland so check it out they're getting their valentine's day decorations up don't forget your furry feathered friends scaled friends on valentine's day ron it's been a fun show. Thanks. Thank you very much. We'll be back with more for this on 800 KXIZ.